<laughs> okay. So, previously, I have uncovered a conspiracy that goes to the very heart of PIDIF. People have been presenting fake talks, giving out false information. I proved this previously. I discovered a further conspiracy where people were impersonating other members of the PIDIF community on Twitter um, and spoke about it at PIDIF way back in March. And then everything went quiet, and I heard nothing. Um, so I assumed that the conspiracy had died down. Um, that was until just this afternoon when I received an email from myself, which surprised me because I'm not in the habit of sending myself emails. Uh, scattered in there amongst all the junk. Um, I opened it. Apparently, the conspiracy really is real. I'm not talking at PIDIF. Again, surprising information, because I was pretty sure I had a YouTube video of me speaking at PIDIF about the conspiracy. I was very surprised to receive another email a few seconds later, stressing the urgency with which I had to reveal that the conspiracy was very real. I thought, hang on, maybe I have sent these emails to myself. I'm very busy. I checked my outbooks, outbox in Outlook. Um, some of the subjects have been obscured to protect the innocent. There was definitely nothing. I'd sent nothing since 2.25. But these emails were appearing in my inbox. I had not sent these emails. And they seemed insistent. They seemed insistent that I couldn't possibly be talking at PIDF tonight because I didn't have time to write a lightning talk. <laughs> there was no way this could happen. I thought, if I'm not sending these emails, maybe somebody's sending them using Python. This convinced me that something was going on and I needed to investigate this further. It turns out that actually, Python, you only need standard library to send email. Right? You don't need any extra add-ons. There's SMTP lib, there's email in there. It's remarkably simple. Um, all you need is a willing server, willing email server, like the university email server, perhaps. You know, they're using Office 365 now, so we'll use that. You need a username and password to log in, and you need to be able to send mail as a particular identity. Um, import a few things. Email.mime is essentially all about building an actual email object that you can send. SMTP lib is the thing for talking to the server. You can build a little mailer, little object that we can create, give it the information it needs to connect, create a little function for building an email message, setting all the headers, who you're going to send it to, who it's sent from when it was sent, the subject, those kind of things. A bit of a body and a function to send mail, right? Build a message, communicate with the server, do all the security that it wants, and then just send the message, OK? Straightforward. It's barely 20 lines of code to send an email, which means we can put together a message, a subject, build our little mailer object, and send it off to any email we want using Python. So let's have a go at that. That's, that's public knowledge anyway. Um, so let's send a message to, let's say Vince. <laughs> uh, Night V8 at cardiff.ac.uk with a message and a subject. Save that and hopefully. Oh, oh no, it's all right, that's my fault. This is me editing, uh, editing code to go into a presentation. So it does sometimes, there we go, sending a message, that has sent. Um, hopefully that should be winging its way through the um, thing, but we could maybe send a few more. <laughs> Uh, one thing I've learned through, I actually send a lot of automated emails, it makes me seem a lot busier than I am, um, is that Microsoft don't like you sending lots of emails with the same subject line. That tends to make them think it's spam, so we'll just adjust the subject and we'll see whether this works. Um, 
Oh. Oh, I've forgotten the... Uh... So hopefully this is going to send a few messages. It does take a while. Um, well, they'll start ticking through. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we could... I mean, <laughs> what do we think? <laughs> I think I think we'll leave it there. But uh, just a, a quick demo of how fast it can be. The mailer code, it's all up on GitHub. You can have a look at it and have a play with it. Thank you. Any questions on why on earth we do that? Does it sustain a SMTP connection, or does it one I think this way I'm doing it. I'm just creating a new one each time I'm doing okay. it. But you could that would just be reordering the, the mailer object. Um, that might be an easy way to tell someone that it's Yeah. If you maintain the SMTP. You described the new mail system as a uh, SMTP one? No, I mean, it's a, a, any it's SMTP it's server it's should work, yeah. Yeah, as long as you've got the username and password, words, so you can log in. I know that comps, you guys do something clever with your email stuff that's perhaps more We used to. We used to have our own email server because we've got our own special .cs, .cf addresses, yeah. but now we just use the... So they're using the same thing I have access to. So yeah. Like, yep. Yep. yep, that's using exactly the same thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. It escalates. <laughs> I got my email down to like 660 emails, and I was really excited. It's like below 1,000 for the first time in forever. Not anymore. No, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can just do it. Excellent. Right, thank you, everybody. So that's it for this year, right? That's it. There will be no pie diff in December because it's just far too close to Christmas. <laughs> so we will uh, reconvene in January. We have a talk in January. Yeah. So we will see everybody back here in 2018. Excellent. Oh, um, I don't know. I guess people are going for a drink, maybe. Uh, there's the usual thing. If there's, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Vince knows the way. <laughs> Should do by now. <laughs>